Hello and welcome to Nadia's Moth Imagining. Today I am going to be continuing from my last project, um, which was not my last video because I did a vlog in between times, um, which was my paint pouring uh, and encaustic wax. So today I'm going to be taking a set of four stretched canvases and I'm going to be reinforcing the back like so, so that I can pour some paint onto these and then once I've done that I'm going to be drawing with the encaustic wax on top and I think I'm going to be painting some sea creatures on these wonderful pores that I came up with. The main reason why I am reinforcing the backs of these stretch canvases is because if it wasn't clear in my last video painting on encaustic wax on a flimsy surface is not great because over time the wax will crack off and it just is not long term durable. So um, in order to use these canvases which I was gifted I am making sure the back is strong and sturdy so that I can put some lovely details on these. Also I should probably say I am not a paint pourer. I have very rarely tried this technique so what I'm just doing is throwing some paint on canvases and calling it paint pours. <laughs> so um, it's not technically paint pouring but it's being messy with a lot of acrylic paint which is a lot of fun. <laughs> Please enjoy the video. I started off by unstretching or de-stretching um, removing the staples from two of my stretch canvases and then adding a piece of card to the canvas and attaching the canvas stretcher back on with my staple gun. I only did this for two of the canvases because I was only planning doing the two paintings. These are still drying so they're a little wobbly I think mainly because they're drying. This one which I did a test on with the wax hasn't actually cracked at all so I'm hoping that this little bit of reinforced cardboard is gonna once it dries solidify enough so that over time the wax won't crack and that is the main concern is that it cracks over time so I'm gonna go ahead and pour some pores on these and then add some wax on top like I did with my other one. Let's give it a shot. I've got some various colours. I'm going for again the um, purple, uh, so pink, pink and blue and red and blue and white because it makes a lovely combination of colours and I'll do two purpley ones here. Okay, I've got some little plastic tubs and I've got some pillars and I have got a secret ingredient to add to these to make them flow. I'm gonna move these up from here in case I spill anything on them before I'm ready. And then I've got three of these, three different colors, mix up to make purple. Put them into the big pot, uh, darkest to lightest, if I remember rightly, and then tip. Right, let's mix some colours. That's such a lovely blue. Love a lot of that. Whoop! That was a bit more than I intended to put in there. And mix. Maybe because I've added so much acrylic, I do need quite a lot to flow. Stuff, because that's not very flowy. Oh, you know what? I also need water. That's a better consistency. Now for this lovely magenta. Probably don't really need as much as I think I do. I 
a little water. And finally, white. I have titanium uh, in a big one, but I actually have more in the little one, so I'm probably going to just use a little one. This was the original container that I got in um, the paint pouring set. I'm glad I kept it. Now it's dark to light in here. So blue. Pink in here. some of that and then wait on top. When I first pour did not go quite as well as I thought it might. I hadn't mixed the paint very well and I didn't tip the cup very well and I made a right mess but I had a lot of fun messing around with tissues and fingers and cups and just playing around with paint. And I mean the pattern at the end wasn't terrible. It was um, very abstract. I thought it looked a bit like clouds. Okay, very nice and colourful. I actually like this a lot. So I'm going to run with some of these colours, maybe mix them around a wee bit, make sure there's no lumps in the bottom here, and go with these colours, but add a bit of dark, particularly this nice dark blue, and maybe turn the pink red. I don't know. I like the pink, but I think we need a wee bit of red in there as well. So I just mixed up. Um, the remainder of the old colours with some newer colours, um, made some new flow colours and then joined them together for another pour. This time I took my time a little bit more, didn't make such a mess, and um, got less lumps in my painting. There were still one or two, I probably should have mixed them with a spatula instead of the back of my paintbrush, um, but I was much happier with this second pour. I was kind of liking some of the colours I'd got down on the cardboard backing as well. Then I decided to just throw the remainder onto the other two canvases. I hadn't reinforced the backs of these at all, so the one with the little bit of um, encaustic on it, I kind of tried to leave that showing and just do like a spattering space type theme. With the other one I was very very loose and just started painting it on, um, throwing it around, messing it up with my fingers, back of the paintbrush, just doing whatever just to kind of get the rest of the paint onto the canvas. I mean, you don't want to waste it, do you? So I've done a couple of different pours. These ones I only reinforced the back after I'd poured them. These ones I reinforced the back, poured them and then added an extra wee bit on the back so these ones are slightly more rigid this one has gone a little weird i'm not quite sure why um but i think it might be all right to paint on and for this one particularly i think i'm going to go with a uh, octopus because it seems to lend itself to a sea creature this is maybe some sort of meteor uh, I've got a little bit of encaustic on this one already, um, and this one is actually pretty sturdy, as is this. But these two are very raised, 
and there's lots of lumpy texture from the pores. I might do a squid maybe on this one. I'm thinking I really like this one, but the way I have done this, it's kind of gone a little bit warped from adding too much of this. And I don't know if I can save it, which is sad. So I might just go with this one and do an octopus and see how that turns out. And if I really like it, then I'll maybe do another one with the encaustic stylus. I have my reference and I have my stylus and I'm just going to heat it up uh, full to start with and then I'll turn it down as I'm working and I like this picture because it's similar kind of colour schemes to this but with a wee pop of green and yellow so it'll be really work well with this colour scheme. I started off by drawing the outline in the white wax. I was going quite loose with this because I mean I can always just paint over the bits that are wrong so I was just copying the reference and trying to make sure I got all the tentacles in the right places and just making him flow. I then chose a colour palette, um, nice pastel green, pink, blue and this purple lilac um, and the pink. He had a lot of lovely pastel shades on him and I was just starting with the face uh, and the head of course, blending out and adding different shades, darker shades, lighter shades and some of the textured pieces on his head. I wasn't quite sure what to do with the tentacle that was right over his face so I started by just colouring it in basically with the colours that were on it and blending the colours together and making sure that they looked nice. I added a little dark outline where it touched his face and then I added with the lightest light white and blue the suckers all along the tentacle. Now that I'd worked out a system for painting the tentacles I just had to repeat that seven more times. <laughs> Starting of course with these ones that are in the center I had to add some shadowed areas and um, work out where all the folds of the skin went. The colours are just so varied on this guy. I mean there's pink and purple and blue and green and yellow and I, I was adding different tones. I had a, a darker purple, a darker blue, a different dark blue and then the green mixing with the blue and it was just fabulous. I kept thinking that the colours wouldn't work together and they just kept working together. It was just like magic. And for the inside curls of the ends of the tentacles, I just did a little bit of blue to kind of echo the background blue and show that it was curled up. On some of the tentacles, the suckers were not very obvious because the tentacle itself was pale colour. But sometimes they were so obvious I actually painted them in this lighter blue instead of just white. And by this point I was starting to think, oh my god I've got three more tentacles, my hand is falling off. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of blending at this point. So I just coloured the tentacles and blended them and blended them and did a bit more blending and coloured them and then by the time I'd done all of them, then I added the suckers on all three of them at the end. But I think this guy was definitely worth the two hours I spent on him. Right, I am so so happy with this lovely right octopus and now on this one here I am going to do a similarly bright squid who is luminescent and 
got the nice dark background, so I'm doing it on the darker one here. Let's go! Um, immediately I started this guy, I wasn't quite, it wasn't just quite coming together. You know, that feeling when you think, oh, I, I did something really good, now let's just try and repeat it. Um, it just, I don't know, there was something off and I couldn't quite work out what the heck it was. I think maybe it wasn't quite central in the painting and that's because of the shape of the body. I started from the middle, I just kind of didn't quite end up in the middle. Um, by the time I started colouring him, the colours weren't mixing, the colours weren't blending as nicely as they had when I did the octopus. They were green and orange and he had all these funny spots on his body and these wavy bits that were going round and I couldn't quite get it. It was frustrating and annoying and I just kept working at him and working at him and hoping that it was going to come together. I even adjusted the face, tried to adjust the angle of the head and oh, it was actually quite painful to be doing almost exactly the same thing and it just not working. So um, I just had to keep going and I just kept on going and hoped for the best. He also wasn't really looking great against the background and I thought, what's wrong? I think maybe there's just too many white splotches in the background. I even tried turning the canvas to see if he looked better a different way up. Nope, still not working. Um, I think the fact that there's just too much difference in value in the background meant that the lighter colour of the squid wasn't showing up so well. And I thought, well, that's the pore's fault, it's not the painting's fault. I'll try and fix that at the end, maybe. Um, so I just kept working on him and hoping for the best and added a lot of texture to his body and I was really happy with the way that was starting to work. Finally, I was happy with something. Um, and then adjusted the eye and I think the tentacles look quite good, um, but they were much smaller than the octopus, so I don't know. Please let me know what you think in the comments. So for my experiments today I made two paintings. This one I am super super happy with. This is a uh, octopus, an octopus, and he is worked so so well. This took a lot of blending and a lot of patience. I think the painting of the octopus alone took about two hours and I think it shows. I think the colours work really nicely, the background is my favourite background I made and this guy is going to be for sale on my website very shortly. The second one I did, I just wanted to do um, a pair or a set of sea creatures, so I did a squid. He didn't turn out quite as well as I would have liked and so I actually painted over the background again. Um, it's not technically a pore anyway because this last pore painting was rather um, very trial and error in fact so I just sort of splodged a whole lot of paint everywhere and so there was a lot of texture on the background you can see this is still shiny because I just painted over some of the white patches that were in the background here I thought it was making the squid himself kind of lost in the background and he pops a lot more now I'm still not entirely happy with the colour scheme it didn't quite work as well with the green and the orange against the blue and the red. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I still think that he's he's not bad, but he's not a patch on the octopus. Um, I think part of it was the, the long body and the, the angle. I even tried saying, well, maybe he goes that way. Maybe he goes that way. But actually, he's not bad at all. And I'm really quite happy with these two fellas. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.